In South England, for a few decades, an incredible phenomenon has been taking place, fascinating and unsettling at the same time, the crop circles. The message transmitted by these fascinating figures could have a great value for humanity. What if it were a new attempt at communication? Such a theory is definitely revolutionary, but there are strong obstacles deriving from the skepticism that circulates around the crop circles phenomenon. Most people are convinced that the pictograms are man-made, a trick organized by groups of jokers. This is the case. Never mind if enormous figures and extremely complex drawings appear overnight. So far, the large amount of data and information gathered and documented brought no results. However, in 2007, something incredible and totally unexpected happened. An event that shook the scientific approach to the phenomenon, strongly rebounding the theory that it is not a human work, but rather a form of communication made by a non-terrestrial intelligence. Is it possible that an alien civilization is trying to talk to us? During the night of the 6th and 7th of July 2007, a researcher named Winston Keach placed a series of cameras on the hill above the East Field near Silbury Hill, an area in the south of England which has always been popular for the crop circle phenomenon. Other researchers joined Mr. Keach. Gary King, a lawyer, very keen on this phenomenon, and his girlfriend Paula. And, and at about 1.30 a.m. we went along to Knapp Hill. Uh, arriving there we met up with the cameraman that I'd met earlier in the day in the cafe and he had a set of cameras with him on top of the hill and he explained to me that he had some more cameras set up in his vehicle which he'd pulled through and parked on the hill overlooking Eastfield as well. When I got there he told me that the two ca cameras that were in the car were infrared and visible light capabilities and very sensitive. Also the cameras he had were on the hill with him was a still camera which had a long exposure, an image enhancing device and also um, a, another um, very light sensitive camera. He showed us a scan of the field with the image enhancer and we could see clearly at that time about 1.35 that there were no formations in the field of East Field or the surrounding fields next to him. We sat there then until about three o'clock just chatting and talking and then just after three there was a big white flash of light in, that completely encompassed the landscape. Uh, that reminded Wynn that he needed to go down to his vehicle and change the tape with tapes over. So he went down to the vehicle, changed the tapes and came back. And we sat there then just talking for about 20 minutes further. And then just, just as some light creeped in, just as some clouds must have moved away, there was a very imperceptible shadow that we could see on his field. So I asked Wynn to look through his um, camera on the hill. Uh, he opened the viewfinder and looked through it and then said to us, you better get up and look at this. And it was at that point, which was about quarter to four in the morning, that we'd, uh, we discovered there was a very significant formation in his field. Uh, he carried on filming and uh, we waited for the lights to come up some more, took pictures and danced around. We were very elated and, um, and we waited until the light came up a little more and then Paula and I drove down to the end of the field while Wynn continued filming and he filmed us for the first, as being the first persons that walked into the formation at about 4.30. On later analysis of the footage that was uh, taken in the car, there were two, two cameras running constantly all night from about 11 o'clock until 5 o'clock. So it completely uh, covers the, the field. If any light would have been in that field, it would have been detected. And we've got cars and vehicles driving past at various times that are with the wall logged and the times of them are logged. So we know that the tapes are running for that, that period of time. There's about 16 hours of footage in total. Some circles in the formation follow the uneven terrain and are deformed in order to appear perfectly round from above. A further evidence that indicates the unexplicable nature of crop circles. Nobody could have been doing this formation. Um, if, they would, if there would have been one two hundredth of a candle light of, of light in that field, these cameras would have picked it up. And plus I feel that we would have seen it from the hill as well because we were constantly make it, maintaining an observation down on this field. Um, quite apart from the logistical 
um, aspect of making a formation like this. The complexity, the size of the formation, the fact that the circles are ovals so that they look circular from the air. However, there is more to be surprised about. When they watched the recorded tapes, Gary King and the others realized that the cameras had caught the beam of light that reminded Wynne to change the tape. Uh, when, he analy when we analyzed those tapes, we found that um, the first visible signs um, of the formation through the lenses of those cameras was actually at 3.20 a.m. and that the light flash that was picked up on the um, end of the first tape registered for three and a half milliseconds as an EM pulse, which is very similar to a bolt of lightning. And it was seven minutes after that, that at 3.20, that the first signs of the formation were picked up by the cameras in the car. But we again didn't see them until about 20 minutes after that. As far as I know, uh, this is the only time that anything like this where continuous footage, continuous tapes have been running all night and captured the field and eliminated any evidence of anybody being in there with any measure, laser, laser alignment measurement devices or, or lights of any kind. As far as I know, this is, this is the best footage and comprehens most comprehensive footage available um, of, of when a crop circle takes. A crop circle appeared in the space of one night. An incredible event caught by Winston Keach's cameras and witnessed by Gary King and Paula. Finally, this is the definite proof that crop circles have an alien origin. What happened in Eastfield on July the 7th, 2007 is bound to be remembered as one of the most significant events since the beginning of the phenomenon in the 70s. Moreover, another consideration is added to this. If the real origin of the crop circles were human, we would be facing a repeated act of vandalism against the owners of the fields in which the pictograms occur. But so far, no one has ever taken any legal action against unknown persons for the damages suffered. So the question arises, is it possible that the British farmers themselves may have the perception of the unusual and complex nature of the crop circles? Michael Glickman is one of the main historical investigators of the phenomenon. He tried several times to convince the owners of the fields on which the pictograms appeared to denounce the damage suffered to the authorities. They're frightened. I've been to the farmers and I've said, here is a photograph of what you have got in your field. And they go, I don't want to see, don't show me this. They're scared. In addition to the claims by Michael Glickman, the direct testimony of the owner of a field where in 2007 a pictogram appeared is particularly interesting. I uh, never saw anybody make it, and um, it appeared, I think, in the middle of the night. It's a real work of art, very precisely created and um, very accurately. And it was in a crop of wheat which was flattened onto the ground and um, it makes it very difficult to, to, to harvest it when it's like that. So I, I estimate that it was probably about an acre of wheat which was spoilt. When I first looked at it, it looked extremely disappointing. It just looked like a bit of vandalism, destruction. Um, my first reaction was to prevent anybody from coming to see it because I thought they would do a lot more damage by walking into the field and traipsing about in my crop. But uh, a few people arrived and they were very persuasive and so I allowed them to come in and have a look around. And they were all very nice people. I think the most interesting thing about the crop circle was, was the people who came to see it actually. Um, we had some extraordinary people and they were all convinced that there was some outside power from outer space coming to create this thing. And it wasn't until we saw the photographs taken from the air that we realised what a beautiful thing it was. No, never forget. And luckily we've got lots of pictures. A bit disappointing to look at on the ground because you couldn't really see the formation. But the photographs taken from aeroplanes are absolutely amazing. And um, it was such a huge area and it's very difficult to imagine how human beings could make that um, because there would be so much measuring involved and um, none of us can understand. 
Not all farmers, though, were that keen. In August 2007, a formation had not been visited by anyone because of the violent opposition of the owner of the land. The farmer fiercely threw out anyone who approached his land with the intention to visit the pictogram and harvested it a few hours after its appearance. We've just been thrown out from the property in which the formation appeared, near the city of Marlborough. We came to this airfield to hire an ultralight aircraft and film the figure from the air, which will unfortunately disappear in a few hours. A figure over 100 meters across. A figure it has not been possible to investigate, but on the basis of what we have seen, it seems extraordinary. I hope that when we do fly over the area, the figure will still be there. Let's hope we're a little lucky. Luckily, it was possible to photograph the circle before it was removed by the threshers. In fact, the wheat had not been harvested yet, and so the pictures show the figure imprinted in the field in all its beauty and harmony. It stands out, as the circle is very close to the farm. Actually, it would have been virtually impossible to make that gigantic symbol at night, and especially without letting the owner of the field notice anything. For a few decades, the crop circles have been causing excitement, fascination, divisions and curiosity. The simplest questions have not yet found an answer. Who produces these designs and why? The answers of science and of hoaxes. Groups of counterfeiters who make pictograms are not sufficient. Too often, the most spectacular formations have appeared over one single night, maybe even in bad weather, such as the famous one of Milk Hill in 2001. The greatest pictogram ever appeared until then, consisting of 409 circles occupying an area of 90,000 square meters. Such events give even more credit to the theory of the non-human origin of the crop circles a phenomenon that could really be the manifestation of a project concerning the entire human race? Charles Mallet, researcher for many years and owner of the Silent Circle Cafe, the most important meeting and information point for the scholars of this phenomenon, has no doubt about it. For me, I'm personally 100% sure that elements of this phenomenon represent a direct interaction from somewhere else up here and it seems to be connected with the earth, with ourselves, our, our own metaphysical or spiritual development, the evolution of our species. Once upon a time, there was a people who possessed a considerable knowledge, a civilization whose messages have been handed over to us through time, a people whose prophecies have impressively started to come true, the Mayas. The eternal charm of mystery encloses the deep knowledge of this ancient civilization, whose memory has been lost in the mists of time. Among the most important Mayan documents where their prophecies are reported, there is certainly the Dresden Code. This is one of the three existing codes which survived the destructive fury of the conquistadors. Called after the German city where it's kept, the Dresden Code is the most informative one. It contains forecasts anticipating with astonishing accuracy some astronomical phenomena and events that will take place even in the distant future. In this code is held one of the most impressive astronomical predictions of the Maya. In fact, they predicted centuries in advance with an error of just a few seconds the eclipse of the 11th of August 1991 one of the most spectacular of the last century that took place in Mexico. This eclipse is associated with a figure that represents death sitting on a throne of bones. It symbolizes the old age, the era that is ending. The prediction or prophecy says, Woe to you people of the earth, the end of the Jaguar Nights will come, together with the beginning of a new era that will rise from the ashes of the previous one. It will be the time of the encounter with the Lords of the Stars. 
Therefore, the eclipse is considered by the Mayas as the starting point of the process bringing the end of the old era and the encounter with the masters from the stars. Could it mean the contact between humanity and an alien civilization coming from the cosmos? Will it be through this contact that mankind will live the new golden age anticipated by the Mayas? On the 11th of August 1991, a disc-shaped unidentified object was sighted in the skies over Mexico City. It was the beginning of a long series of sightings by witnesses of an unprecedented wave of UFOs along the whole Mexican territory. Afterwards, incredible waves also occurred in other parts of the world. Like Belgium and ex-USSR countries, increasing the general attention on the UFO phenomenon like never before. And what about the crop circles? Remarkably, since that year, the circles started appearing with greater frequency, and the figures became more complex and fascinating. It was as if both phenomena obey the same command, as if they were part of the same project. Almost using the same language of the Mayan prophecy contained in the Dresden Code, the lords of the circles put a signature on the English fields by using a symbol that belongs to the Sumerian civilization. It is called Dean Jir and appeared in 1992, incorporated into a pictogram representing the solar logos, which also means union of heaven and earth. The symbol Dean Jir means the just people traveling on celestial ships of fire. Who are the just people and what about the celestial ships of fire? Is it a coincidence that the Dean Jir appears together with another symbol that indicates link, union between heaven and earth? The similarity with what was announced by the Mayas is extraordinary, but there is more. Why a Sumerian symbol and not a Mayan one? What is the connection between this symbol, the Dresden Code Prophecy, and UFOs? The answer might come from the experience of an American policeman. Lonnie Zamora, on the 24th of April 1964, near the town of Socorro, New Mexico. In 1964, New Mexico, the policeman Lonnie Zamora witnessed the landing of an object of unknown nature. He talked about it to his colleagues who arrived soon after the object had flown away. The ground was deeply embossed. That confirmed the landing of the object. On the side of the UFO, Zamora saw a particular symbol, a sort of arrow inside a semicircle. When his colleagues arrived, a few minutes after the happening, the ground was still hot and the policeman was visibly shaken. On the side of the Ovoid UFO was imprinted a symbol that Zamora would never forget, the Dean Jir. Incredibly, this symbol appeared again in the summer of 1999, inside a giant pictogram about 300 meters long. There were also, in greater numbers than the first time, the symbols of union between heaven and earth. But the connection between crop circles and what was announced by the prophecy of the Dresden Code regarding the masters from the stars is not just restricted to these occurrences. Clearer and far more important events started taking place in 2000. On the 13th of August 2000, near the Chilbolton Military Radio Telescope, appeared a beautiful crop circle that could not be deciphered. Its proximity to an installation supervised 24 hours a day makes it difficult, if not impossible, to think about a human origin. Its explanation arrived unexpectedly the year after. In fact, in the same field, on August the 14th, 2001, a new pictogram appeared. This time, however, it was not the usual symbol. This is, in fact, a face with clear humanoid features designed with the same technique used for the old black and white photos of newspapers. A set of points where the difference of width and distance between them creates the image. A technique never seen before in crop circles. By applying a graphic filter on the photo, more details become clear. 
If we apply a Gaussian filter 6.6 .6 pixels wide, you see how light and shadow are outlined. Proving that that being was alive when the picture was shot, or when they impressed this image into the wheat field. Just five days later, on August the 19th, a few dozen meters away from the alien face, an even more shocking figure appeared. It seemed the reply to the binary code message transmitted by the Arecibo radio telescope in 1974. It was right in that year, in fact, that Frank Drake, scientist and director of Arecibo at the time, together with the famous astronomer Carl Sagan, tried to communicate with a group of stars identified as M13. It sent out a message of introduction of mankind to a hypothetical alien civilization, indicating data on our numerical system, on the basic atoms of terrestrial life, on the structure of human DNA and of our solar system with the Earth's relative position. They also included data relative to the Arecibo radio telescope. According to calculations, the message should have taken 25,000 years to reach its destination and the same again to receive a reply. A really long time, let alone the fact that no one could tell whether that group of stars really hosted a supposed alien civilization. These circumstances make even more startling the appearance of the Chilbolton pictogram. Is it possible that someone received our message and replied to it? Much earlier than expected? We have the same numerical system with zero and one. Therefore, the answers are universal. The basic atoms of life are the same, but in their body there is also silicon. Then, where the chemistry of DNA is mentioned, we also notice the fact that all the components of our DNA are clearly identical to theirs. This shows that we come from the same universal principle. When they mention their genome, they tell us that they have 1,048,000 sequences more than us. This means that they are much more evolved than us, which is normal, since they have been able to achieve such a development. To prepare a similar message, they should, they ought to have a greater evolution. Then they provide other details telling us that they live in two planets and four moons, namely in six different worlds. And finally, they refer to the instrument used to send out this message. Surprisingly, we found that the figure representing this device appeared one year before in the same place. Thus, they notified that in the same place they would have given a new message. The way in which these beings speak to us needs to be carefully interpreted. The elements involved in the Chilbolton pictograms are astonishing. Is this really the reply of an alien civilization? Is it fake or real? The Mayan Dresden Code announces that, starting from the 1991 eclipse, it has begun a process that will lead humanity to the encounter with the Lords of the Stars. Are these events part of it? One year after the Arecibo reply, exactly on the 15th of August 2002, in the fields of Crabwood Farm, west of Winchester, there appeared an even more amazing crop circle. It depicts an alien who holds a CD on which is carved a binary code message. This is the ASCII programming language for computers. Some researchers have decoded it. This figure tells us several things, very interesting indeed. It tells us, beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises. I don't know if this is related to what is, meaning global warming, or to wrong messages that they have given us, or if on the other hand it is directly related to the beginning of the war in Iraq. Given that this warning, this message, appeared in August 2002, then, in the same message, it says, much pain but still time. 
Again, we can attribute this to both issues, either what was happening on Earth or the Iraqi war. Then it goes on to say, believe there is good out there, which is the most important phrase, because it tells us that God exists, it tells us that the good, the upright exist, that they are our friends. I reckon it is an optimistic message for that reason. And finally it tells us, the message is closing. We don't know if this means that the communication would end there. I definitely hope not. The so-called alien face from Crabwood Farm has raised much controversy about its authenticity. Yet, after many years, nobody has shown it to be a fake and no one has claimed its creation. The complexity of its realization, simulating the structure of a television frame, the three-dimensional effect of the figure, the difficulty of achieving the binary code in a spiral, as in real compact disks, are all elements that make the hoax theory very unlikely. There is also another important element emerging from the encoding of the message. Some statements remind us of the Mayan prophecies. The phrase, there is good out there, confirms the very Mayan concept of a universe governed by firm laws of harmony. Much pain but still time seems to emphasize what was predicted by the prophecies on the years preceding the date of 2012. Finally, the conduit is closing seems a direct reference to the end of the cycle on the 21st of December 2012. Is it possible that the Mayas held knowledge coming from an alien civilization? This theory is definitely fascinating and the data collected seem to collaborate it. Data supported by the extraordinary increase of unidentified flying object sightings all over the world. It is getting harder to deny the anomalous nature of this phenomenon. The message is definitely important for the future of humanity. In such difficult times of our history, it could be a means to help us in overcoming hardship. Will mankind appreciate its worth?